Greetings, I'm Rob Chapman. And I'm the captain. We're still very awake despite the fact that it's been two days of savage filming savagery. It's hot in here. It's the last video of a two day shoot and we are going to stay enthusiastic for you for at least the next three minutes. Because we're on a quest to find out which home amplifier Lee Anderton thinks is the new way forward for him. Well, Yes, in a very self-indulgent video last year, we shot out the Yamaha THR10, which was the amp that I used to have, versus the Vox Adio GT, which is this one, and the Mustang GT40, which is which was the little GT40, the little Mustang that came out last year. Uh, because I was getting slightly bored of the Yamaha and it annoyed me that if you wanted to use a looper with it, it didn't have an effects loop and all that kind of malarkey. So in that shootout, the Vox Adio one, and so that's what I now use. I say at home, I'm actually talking about in my office is where this right. amplifier is. Um, and if ever I want to have a little noodle during work time or after work or whatever, I plug into that because I can't make too much noise. Um, more recently, Boss have introduced the Katana, which has this cool, um, Katana Air, sorry, which has this cool wireless thing, which I thought was a gimmick and yet I'll be honest with you, in my office, I kind of sit at a desk and then like three meters away is the little Vox amplifier. Yeah. And there are some times when I'm too lazy to even move three meters to plug my guitar in. And that's right. where that, so the air kind of appeals. However, I'm starting to sort of think to myself, why don't I just buy a little amp? You know, like what really, what is the obsession with a really, really little amplifier versus just a little amplifier? Um, so we mean got, a valve amplifier. Yes, I do. Sorry, a valve that I can just use my pedals with. Um, so we've got two valve amplifiers here. One that I've taken very much with price in mind. So this is about going. What if I had similar money to these? Admittedly, it's a little bit dearer, but ballparkish, not dissimilar. If I had similar money, what could I get? And that's where the Blackstar HT5 comes in. That's been a super popular amplifier. And I know that you valve amp aficionados out there will be going, oh, it's not a proper valve amplifier. You know, it's got valves in it. It has, uh, it just has uh, some of the gain section is done through a solid state, like a pedal, basically, built in. Or if money was no object or less of an object, because it's always an object, but you know, I'm doing okay and I get good discount on these sort of things. So if money was less of an object, what if I just bought an absolute classic little tube amplifier. Uh, and, and we picked the Princeton here because this is a, you know, probably one of the most famous little low, vo uh, low wattage uh, valve amplifiers ever, ever, ever in the world. The caveat with these two is they, I can't, I'm, I, I'm gonna try and do this whole demo at the volume level that I would have in my office. Right. So if these still sound rubbish, uh, because you can't you just, just soundproof your up. office and make a better room and then have a four yeah. four by twelve stack. It's just not like that really in my I and I and there's there's a bit of a thing where so I worry that if other people in the business can hear me playing guitar, they'll think the boss isn't working. Why should I? Right. See, so I have to keep my amp really really quiet so they think oh Lee's up there working hard, so I'll work hard too. <laughs> um, so look, the Vox Audio. Uh, Rob's plugged in at the moment, and I might just sort of tell you a little bit about, uh, go and watch the, the previous video if you want the full rundown. But the Adio has got lots of different um, amp kind of models in it, uh, lots of different effects in it, and it's got this stereo imaging sort of wide thing that makes it sound bigger than it is. Um, so I've got a couple of sounds that I would use here, so like a clean and a driven sound. I've, there's loads and loads of different sounds in here, but this is the kind of volume that I would play at. the challenge and I hopefully you guys will relate to that and thinking yeah okay that is the volume that it needs it's to be really quiet I, I, I just would never play guitar that quiet well Rob came up with a good point you know why wouldn't you just run some software and put it into headphones and yeah. stuff like that but I, it's just too much of a faff for me I, I'm not a software guy so um, well we can probably get a smidgen louder but look this I, I, I wouldn't be any louder than that in the office really yeah yeah I just it for, for me that removes all of the physicality of playing guitar. I want to hear it kick. Yeah. I want to get that little bit of a sound wave. I want to feel. I want to feel it. Otherwise, I don't feel inspired. Yeah, but I think that's the that's the genius with things like Yamaha THR and the Vox. Is I think they do. You know, if you go to that driven sound. <laughs> No, 
it will go louder, but yes. that's kind of not the point of this demo. Um, but I like that. I think it sounds good. If I fiddle around with the EQ a bit, you know, maybe make it a little bit brighter. <laughs> That is my current amp de jour, is that what they call it? Amp squeeze. of the day, it's current squeeze. If we jump over to the, the, the boss, and we might as well demo its wirelessness, um, you take the transmitter out. It, when it's plugged into here, it's charging up. So when you plug into here, it's kind of ready to go. It's got this weird, what's the thing in a mobile phone that knows what way up the phone? Is it called an accelerator or a, or a, a well, I can't remember what it's called, but essentially the idea is if you were to just leave that transmitter in your guitar and put the guitar on a stand, once it's worked out that the transmitter hasn't moved for a minute or whatever, it, it turns just, itself off. It yeah. turns itself and the amp off. And then as soon as you pick it up and it goes, oh, I'm moving now, it turns your amp back on again, which I think is kind of cool. So if we just get like a, a similar crunchy kind of clean sound out of a clean, dirty sound out of this, similar volume. Go on. <laughs> I think probably people are going to, because we're so quiet, mm. people are also going to hear they, they my will, actual guitar yeah, through the microphone. the guitar string ringing, so apologies about I apologise. But anyway. So, I can tell you within like five seconds of playing this, I, 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 I'm going to stay with the Vox over the, over the, unless the wireless thing was absolutely like the best thing that you could imagine about an amplifier. I mean, it is pretty cool because you it's can just go cool. make a coffee with the guitar strapped on, walk around, uh, do your yeah. phone. You and, know, it's, phone. and it's also battery operated as well. So it kind of does mean that it's true, true wireless. You don't need to have this plugged in at all. It doesn't have to be battery operated. No, we're running it off the mains. I mean, they, they'll both do Bluetooth streaming so you can stream music through them. The only major difference really is that the Vox does need to be physically plugged into your guitar and, and the Katana doesn't. But I think the personally, again, I like course, the sound of the Vox. You could also buy an affordable uh, wireless kit. There are loads of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, although, well, I say not much more, 100 pound really minimum, I would say, for a wireless kit. Not yeah, about that. So, if you really, really wanted it to be wireless. Anywho, so look, there's two, and I still think, I know we've not got the Yamaha THR10 in here, and the THR10 still is really, really popular. But again, if you want to see this versus the THR10, there's another video on a channel from last summer. You should go and watch that. I, I'm just saying it. Sorry, boss. I still prefer the sound of the audio to the... GT to the air, uh, but again, this does look awful. I accept that. Um, <laughs> please, please, Vox, make this look nice, and then everything will be good. It'd be so easy, by the way. I'm just gonna you can have this for free. Just make the grill black and the logo silver. Immediately looks fine. Anyway, um, if we go into the HT5, yeah. Now. I want to just make sure that we are at a kind of a similar volume level. Uh, and I'm going to, Rabir's asked me to just pop these on the floor. And he throw them away. He doesn't want the, uh, them obscuring the path to the mics. So if we plug these back in, I'll lift them back up again. Yeah. It's just it's very uninspiring, not very full. There's less reverb. It needs to be louder. The reverb we're I'm dying for volume. The here. reverb we're sort of struggling with because uh, in the room we've got very little reverb on these amplifiers. But I'm conscious of the fact because of the way we're miking them, we're not close miking them. There's going to be a lot more reverb, just natural reverb coming on because of the mic placement. So you really wouldn't be louder than this. sounds better than the the boss. I'm right. not so sure about. I'd need to plug the Vox back in again. We might do that at the end. 
Uh, I can use the uh, built-in distortion on this amplifier, like this. Here's a crunch. It's not loud enough to drive the mechanical apparatus within it. The speaker it's using yeah. wants the volume to, to give off, all, and the cabinet to give all the frequencies off. So you're lacking all of the low end because it's not being driven yeah. loud enough. If you push that up just a little bit, yeah. it'll be 100% better. Yeah, but here in, I mean, I get Facebook questioned all the time. Captain Lee, you know, I need a, what little valve amplifier would you recommend for me to play in my apartment? And I'm literally, I email back going, and it's very difficult to do in an email, but what I'm trying to say is, if this is the volume that you need to play at when you say, for my apartment. Yeah, Kemper. I'm not sure the valve amplifier way is the, ever the right way to go. And I've often said, I think you should just get the little, the Vox Adio or THR or whatever. Kemper is absolutely would be in a great, uh, solution certainly if you wanted to run through headphones totally or, or but, even just but you can have a, a cranked up Marshall stack very quiet because it's a Kemper mm. but you it, they don't do a combo do they so you're into buying the Kemper and then running it into some studio monitors or into a little cabinet no, just straight into it. a one by twelve but then you've got the oh, same wow. issue if you if you dribble no no the run, volume run into, it into the cab but use cab emulation and well, then you it, still think that unbelievably over because you're still going to have the same problem. It's not mechanically driving the speaker. No, no, but it's hard. emulating the cab being driven. It will. Yeah. I mean, yeah. No, look, I, I don't look. Don't get me wrong. If but Kemper, this isn't about what I want. This well, and I agree. Look, I, I could have a Kemper with a separate cab in my office, but there's a bit you're of me. You're not a Kemper guy, are you? Well, and nothing to do with the sound. There's a bit of me that just. You know, you, you, what you don't get to see is everything that gets edited out of the videos that we do, trying to set things up with everyone in the room going, how do you store? What's the, how do you get to the rig with the thing on it? And, it, uh, and then everybody go, pressing all the buttons to see what happens. And it just drives me mad. And I just, all I do is sit there going, I just want to plug into an amp that's just got volume on gain on it. And that's all I want. I'm a simple man. Um, so I think that sounds, I mean, if we go back to the clean sound, one of the things that, I've experienced with my Vox, and it's rubbish at, is as a pedal amp, and my Yamaha THR are used to find as rubbish for pedals as well. Yeah. Sounds great internally, but obviously with a regular amp, at least you can kind of get your favorite pedals and... Ever so difficult because this is so I, it's so quiet in here. I can tell yeah. Rob. I, I've seen avocados more inspired than I'm just. I have no. This doesn't make me want to play at all. Uh, yeah, and if and, this was my option, I would honestly. Yeah, and I'm not saying this for any reason other than the truth. I would just play my guitar acoustic, just acoustically. Yeah, it's that a sounds shout. better to me. <laughs> it honestly does than, than playing. I think there's an argument that says at this volume maybe headphones is the right way to go. But anyway, look, we've got one more amp. To, to sort of have a play, and then I'm going to have a play because it's you know my well, money this after is, all. Well, this is your, your so can you plug in number two? two? So number two on a Fender amplifier. I don't know how many other brands do this, but the, the second input on a Fender amp is a padded input, so it's a little bit quieter. Anyway, it's I think the original idea was that you um, if you had very high output humbucky kind of pickups and you wanted to retain a clean sound, you'd plug into input two and it right, would right. just take the edge off. So here we go. <laughs> Maybe it can go a bit louder. I'm going to put the Vox back up here, but I'm going to put it in front of the Black Star because I didn't okay, massively... Now, now, it's, now it's your turn to play this. Yeah, I didn't massively dig. For me, the two amps that I liked the sound of was probably just sticking with the Vox or potentially going to the Princeton with some pedals. So let's just see. And I, again, Strat wise, let's see. Can I pinch the lead back out of here? So, no. we, so we go back over here to a clean sound. God, it's so quiet. <laughs> noodle away and uh, you know in the quiet with that i know what you're saying about it doesn't give you that if i can hear my actual guitar over my amplifier i'm not interested <laughs> you can't really hear 
really. I mean, maybe a little bit. I don't you can absolutely. Hear the Let's go back to my dirty sound. That's better. It's a little bit loud again, though, isn't it? I don't have too much reverb, probably. I can have it a bit louder than that. I think it's good. the best sound we've had so far. Yeah, I, it's a good little amplifier this, so just plug me into input two of that. And you're in the two. Well, that is a nice clean sound. And then I could literally... That's too loud. That's too loud. Way louder than we have it. So, turn the volume on the... Um... Turn the volume on the pedal down. Back into this one. The Vox sounds better. It's uh, you, that volume. Yeah, level. and you wouldn't justify paying if you were never going to turn that up any louder. No. You wouldn't justify. There's way more gain on there, isn't there? Let's turn that down. I think you're sticking with the Vox. I think I'm, it's actually not the conclusion I wanted to come to because, like most of you, I just like to buy stuff all the time just for the right. sake of it. And I was kind of hoping that. Uh, Talking of for the sake of it, Lee, mm. can we get a camper and just. Rob is convinced that actually the way to uh, tonal Nirvana for me in my office is to spend uh, probably the thick end of that Kemper, powered Kemper plus a little 112 cab, yep. plus maybe the remote floorboard. I don't know, we're at somewhere in the region of 2,200. No, 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 he's got a remote floorboard. Well, okay, I don't need the floorboard then. All right, so that. And you don't need that either. It's just useful if you want it. You well, can just use headphones on this. Yeah, I don't. I don't use headphones. Okay, well then, just use that. So, uh, so that's that and that together is somewhere in the region of just over two thousand pounds. Yep. Uh, and that's about two hundred and fifty pounds. I think it might be less. So than get that. two of these instead. So here. We I mean, I mean, it doesn't sound bad, but I'm not wetting myself over two grand's worth of tone here. Can I just unplug it and put it into this one again? You prefer that, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> At this volume. Okay, let me we'll try one more thing. Yeah. Put it back into this. Step on your plimsoll. Just think, it's horses for courses. If you want an amp that is designed if you need a horse to play, and you've got different kinds of courses. Yeah, if you want an amp to play really low volume, buy an amp that's been designed ground up to do that. And that's what this and Yamaha THR, and to a certain extent Katana Air, has been designed to do. I think it does. My, a great my problem job. Mm. is that I am unashamedly driven by my eyes, and I will oh. never buy this because of the way it looks. I've said this to the powers that be at Vox. I'm sure they could have sold more if people, you know, really, when you buy an amplifier, if people are talking about not wanting to own it because of how it looks, you've really done a terrible job. <laughs> you know, because it, it should just be, you know, an amp should be able to look pretty basic and still people go, OK, I'll buy that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But to actually make one, I don't know. That's my, that, that's, I'm, I'm, with, I'm with you on that one. I mean, if we do, let me. 
Let's see if I can get you to like it if I just turn it up. Oh no, 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 or you do. I like don't it. dislike the tone. Yeah. I would never play at this volume level. Yeah, for sure. I, I would use a Kemper yeah. all day long, yeah. or, or I would use my RD1 on the low setting, yeah. Yeah. or I would use the Universal Audio Twin, Apollo Twin. Yeah, uh, I think if you're into software plugins and everything like that, I get that. If, you wanted to, if you've got a but little through, studio setup. But through setup, a 2 by 12 vert cab, right. or monitors and just quiet, yeah. and it would sound better than that, in yeah. my opinion. I, I, I just think if you... If you rocked up somewhere and you take any piece of kit in the world and you go into a room and you say, that's the volume it needs to be, yeah. I don't think you're going to get a lot that's going to beat that. We're going to get a, an amazing comment section on this one. It's going to be in interesting. In my opinion. I mean, plug in your well, guitar again, it, or my it's guitar. Opinion, it's opinion. Uh, opinions. opinions. Opinions are like <laughs> holes. They, they are. Everyone's they got one. They smell. <laughs> They're, uh, so They're in politics. Rebecca, can you uh, adjust the, the level on the mics a bit? Because it's going to get a bit loud. Not stupid loud, but... <laughs> I bet that counter sounds better if you put that oh, low. Of course. Well, really? Well, yeah, at that volume, but that's not the... Oh, what I was trying to do was demonstrate that you could use this at a louder volume. And still but like if it. I was playing at that volume, I'd, I'd use something completely different <laughs> that would sound way but better. But then that, that now we're talking about this being good value for money. Yeah. As opposed to, you know, uh, better than anything else. Yeah. This... So, but what's, so what we've highlighted has been very different people. <laughs> Crikey. I think people knew that they, anyway. They knew that from the start. <laughs> Uh, so your choice yeah. is I'm that I'm, I've done a little bit of research now. I've tried some other amplifiers. I've 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 satisfied myself that uh, as far as a little office, a little amp for my office, I'm going to stick with the Vox Audio. Hopefully, Vox will do a uh, Lee Anderton custom version of this at some point soon and make it look nicer. And ultimately, what I'm hoping for at some point in the future is that someone comes up and does like a Bluetooth looper built into it. So what I really want, guys, is a little pedal, or like a two-button pedal or whatever, a one-button pedal that Bluetooth attaches to the amplifier so I can have it on the floor and activates the internal looper in here. And then you've nailed it. That's my Yuki, amp. get I'm on that, done. Tings. Uh, so we'll send at least one of them. But there you go. As Rob said, you comment below, what do you think yeah. is the best way to get really great tones at really low volumes? I'm going to say, for me, that volume, yes. it's probably a camper or software. Fine. Good for you. Well, I'm sticking with my trusty box. And on that note, I've been the captain. I've been Jumpers. See you next time. Bye. Hey everybody, thanks for watching the Anderton's Guitar YouTube channel. If you're a drummer or a keyboard player or interested in music technology, you might find one of our other channels interesting, and I'll put details of those in the description below. If you want to find out more about the products we've just featured, please click here. If you'd like to buy a t-shirt like this, please click here. If you want to watch another video on our guitar channel, click down here. And to subscribe to our guitar channel, click here. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.